Hi everybody, we have a really good video today. So this was requested by somebody in the comments. So in this video, we are going to apply some thermal paste on our HP 2020 laptop, but it's not just any thermal paste, it is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut paste. So I did buy one, uh, just a small tube right here. I think it was one gram. So that's what I'm gonna be using in terms of thermal paste. We have our um, PH0 screwdriver. You could totally use a PH1 screwdriver as well. I tested it, so you're good with that. We have our isopropyl alcohol, of course, to uh, remove the thermal paste. A couple cotton swabs and uh, plastic prying tools, of course, to open up that laptop. And we have one paper towel. So first thing we gotta do is remove the two screws right here. By the way, a big shout out to the comments for requesting this video. Um, I'll put up screenshots of the results before and after toward the end of the video, but I was skeptical at first, but now I just cannot deny the results. Basically, uh, CPU performance improved. Uh, so I have no doubt about it, um, that the stuff really works. So under the first rubber lining, there is one screw. And under the second second rubber lining, we have three screws underneath here. So if you guys have seen other videos, uh, we have opened up this laptop before. So you're gonna notice it's kind of loose when we open it up. It's much easier. Uh, but if it's your first time opening up this laptop, you're gonna notice that it's a little bit harder. So, and yeah, it was really hot this day. So you can see I'm a little bit sweaty there. But, uh, oh yeah, don't forget this third screw here on that, uh, underneath that second rubber lining. But yeah, like I said, I'll put up screenshots toward the end of the video, but I am impressed. Um, like I said, I was skeptical. I was actually doubted, uh, you know, in my opinion, I was thinking like thermal paste is thermal paste, you know, how big of a difference could it be? Um, and I was wrong. So I ran a bunch of, uh, CPU benchmarks and tests and even temperature wise. And I have to say that, um, once again, I have been proven wrong by um you know by the results uh, i just can't deny it you know it's pretty interesting so yeah once we use our plastic prying tools just gotta go underneath here yeah definitely big shout out to the comments for uh suggesting that i try it out and you know i am just impressed i mean it's consistent with all the results so definitely high performance stuff definitely works in the future i might have to get the big tube instead So yeah, I'm just going around with the plastic prying tool. It's pretty loose. All right, so that's the bottom cover right there. So let me show you guys the battery. So we have to remove the battery. So what's weird about this laptop is there's four screws holding the battery. Two, this is screw number two right here. So three, the first row, the top row basically has three screws and then the bottom row only has one screw which is on the lower left corner. So let me show you guys. So here's screw number three. So let me put that aside. So we have screw number four right down here on the lower left. Pretty weird, right? But I mean, that's how I got the laptop and that's how it is, so. Pretty interesting, and I just gotta slide it out. Good to go. So once we have the battery disconnected, we can get to work. So there are four screws for the heatsink on this laptop. You can see it right there. And it is numbered by the way. So let me see if I can get you guys a close up. Let me flip it around here. So let's see. So on the lower left corner is your number one. On the upper left is three. So we got number one right here. Number two, three, and four. All right, so since I'm gonna be removing it, I should probably go in the reverse order because I'm gonna be unscrewing it. So I'm unscrewing number four first, and then I'm in unscrewing number three, and then number two, and unscrewing number one. So let us take a look. I know how people have been curious about this uh, CPU on this uh, laptop, so let's remove this screw here. All 
All right, now we can remove the heat sink. Awesome. So here's what the factory thermal paste looks like. Easy peasy, so nothing too fancy. Okay, so we should probably start cleaning out the thermal paste. I'm just using a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. I'm just kind of gently removing the thermal paste. So there's definitely a good amount of thermal paste on this laptop, and we have been using this laptop a lot for gaming. So uh, an improvement, an upgrade in thermal paste is probably what we need since uh, we've been trying the craziest games on this thing. And to be honest, I'm actually surprised this laptop has held up. You know, it's proven me wrong many times. And then even at the end of this video, this thing also proved me wrong, even with the thermal paste. I don't know why, but uh, I don't know why I was so skeptical. But if it works, it works. So let, let's clean it off. Easy peasy. So yeah, I just used the cotton swab with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol to kind of loosen up the thermal paste. And then I just used a paper towel to clean it off. So, oh yeah, for this part here, I'm going to clean off the thermal paste first a little bit. But you see that black strip? It's like it's a protective covering. So let me just clean it up a little bit. And then we are going to remove that black thing. In my opinion, if you're going to replace the thermal paste, I really don't think you have to remove the uh, black lining. It's like a, I think it's protecting other components on the motherboard, but I totally could be wrong. But I'll show you guys in a minute or so. Um, right now, let me clean off the thermal paste as I, as I can see it right now. And then we're going to remove the RAM and then we're going to remove that um, uh, thin black strip there. I'll show you guys. But uh, in my opinion, I don't think you have to remove it, but I want to show you guys anyways, because I know somebody's going to be asking about it. So it's probably a good time to, uh, Take a look at it. I also want to show you guys a close up of the CPU. So let us remove the RAM here just so it doesn't get in the way. Now we can remove this black strip here. I'll show you guys. So I, I just used my plastic prying tool. So it is glued there, just letting you know. So it is stuck to the um, the surroundings of the CPU. I think it's meant to protect the um, other components. But uh, you know, don't quote me on that because I could totally be wrong. You know, I'm still learning as we go along and um, I haven't opened up a computer that has this on it. Usually it's been a straight up CPU socket. So we have this, it's like a thin, thin strip. So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, but I, I don't wanna clean it up too much. Uh, the reason is, you know, I want the thing to still have its stickiness on it. So I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit here. Let me show you guys a close-up of the CPU. Not 100% clean yet, but we're going to clean it somewhere later. So you can see it's AMD Athlon Silver. So pretty shiny. But yeah, I'm sure somebody will tell us in the comments uh, what the black uh, protective strip is and what it's for. So like I said, I'm learning as we go along. And I've opened up a bunch of computers, but this is my first time seeing such a thing. And it wasn't exactly in the manual either, so so let me just put it back. I didn't want it. I don't want it to lose its uh, stickiness. And then we're gonna apply the high performance uh, thermal paste, specifically the thermal grizzly cryonaut paste. And I guess it says thermal grease on the packaging as well. So I did try to read the instructions a little bit. Um, they have an X method and like a um another method, but I think it it probably you know, what would work on a bigger um, CPU. This is kind of a small CPU. I was going to do the line method, but it's such a small CPU that I figured the P method will do the trick on this. Either way, in my opinion, what really matters is the results. So P size, uh, it's good enough for me. 
And then I'm going to put back the heat sink. All right, so putting back screw number one. We have our screw number two. We got our screw number three. And screw number four. So definitely look out for that wire there. It's kind of in the way, so I kind of moved it a little to the side. And then let's put back our uh, stick of RAM here. Perfect. Now we can put back our battery. I'm just gonna flip this over to show you guys. So remember there's four screws total for the battery. So three on the top row and then one on that lower left corner. Um, well, that's what I saw on my laptop. I don't know, it could probably, it could be different on your laptop, but so screw number one, like I said, it was a really hot day. So to be honest, I'm actually surprised that the CPU um, still read at lower temperature than before because it was really it was really really hot that day okay so screw number three and screw number four all right let's put back this cover It's gonna tighten up a little bit. All right, so far so good. Let us put back our screws here and let's put back our rubber lining. So three screws on the top row. We have one screw here on that, um, the uh, bottom row with the rubber lining. Okay, so let us put back our rubber lining here. One. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that uh, this thing hasn't lost its um, stickiness since we've opened this laptop so many times. Okay, put back the bottom rubber lining. All right. And then let's put back the two screws. All right, now let's wipe it down a little bit and then we are going to the results. So like I said, um, the uh, thermal paste did not disappoint. I ran a bunch of uh, CPU benchmark tests after and even a you know, core temp just to see how it is and it's done a good job. So core temp, you can see an improvement, uh, lower, low current temperature reading, uh, lower minimum and a lower max as well. So max was like 53 degrees. It's pretty crazy to me, but, uh, you know, I guess, you know, high performance means high performance, you know, that frequency, I don't really understand too much. And then I did a eight 64, just 10 minutes of the stability test, um, low temps also. So full load, it did reach a uh, maximum of 87. But it's still lower than before. Even the average was lower and the current and the minimum were lower. So Cinebench also saw a huge improvement in points. Uh, what is that? Like 180 points improvement right there. So I think that's pretty good. So this stuff really does work. I, I, I hit a Nova Bench CPU test as well. Score improved by 27 points. So 302 now. So pretty good. And then I also ran a... Uh, user benchmark test. So the user benchmark, it did improve, but just 45.6% um, before it was 38.5%, but still an improvement. And even Geekbench Pro CPU um, benchmark test, it improved. Not by a lot, but I still saw a huge difference there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.